Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. Many refrigerators have a built-in ice maker. If it's not making ice, then it's likely an issue with the water valve or the ice maker itself. In this episode, first, we'll learn how it all works. Then, we'll test the water valve. Finally, we'll see how to install a new ice maker. All ice makers work in the same basic way. When ice is needed, power is sent to the water inlet valve. The solenoid energizes and the valve opens for about 7 seconds, letting the water fill the ice cube tray. After the water freezes, the heating element temporarily warms up. This helps release the cubes from the mold. The harvesting arm rotates to push the cubes into the ice bucket assembly. The shutoff arm lifts up, the arm lowers, and the process begins again. Now, if the bin is full, then the shutoff arm can't lower. It will disconnect power until there is enough room for more ice. Some ice makers don't use a heating element. Instead, they completely flip the tray to release the cubes. If the water valve fails, then water won't fill the ice maker tray. As well, if the ice maker is faulty and doesn't send power to the water valve, then the valve will not open. It could also be an issue with the water supply line or the fill tube. A buildup of ice can prevent water from flowing into the ice maker tray. To begin, you might need a screwdriver or nut driver, an adjustable wrench, and a multimeter. You might also need a bucket, plastic container, and a cloth. Keep in mind there is some variation between models and not all refrigerators will have the same parts. You can enter your model number on the Amory Supply website to see a parts breakdown. This can be helpful to show you which parts are in your refrigerator and where they are located. First, check to see if the ice maker is on. Some refrigerators will have a toggle switch close to the ice maker. Other models will have a button or setting on the control panel. Now check to see if the shutoff arm is stuck in the raised position. In some cases, you can lower this arm to reset the ice maker. In the back of the freezer is a fill tube that supplies water to the ice maker tray. Over time, this tube can become blocked with ice. There might also be ice forming around or below this spot. You can use a screwdriver to help clear any ice from the spout. As well, a heat gun or a hairdryer on a low heat setting can also help melt the ice. If this doesn't help, then you'll have to do some more tests. First, Slide the refrigerator out from the wall. When there is enough room, unplug the cord to disconnect the power. Close the shutoff valve to turn off the water supply. Next, use an adjustable wrench to loosen and remove the supply line. Let any remaining water drain into a plastic container. Now, slide the fridge all the way out so you have plenty of room to work. On the back of the refrigerator is an access panel. Use a 1 quarter inch nut driver to remove the screws. Now simply lift up to remove the panel. It's best to check if there's sufficient water pressure. Place the end of the water line into a small bucket. Now open the shutoff valve. There should be a steady stream of water. 
If the flow is weak, then check the line to see if there are any blockages. If the water pressure is still low, then it's best to call a plumber. At the back of the refrigerator is the water valve assembly. The valve is controlled by a solenoid. When the coil is energized, the magnetic field pulls a small pin which opens the valve. We can test the solenoid for continuity. A continuity test will determine if there's a continuous path for electricity to flow through. Without continuity, the solenoid will not work. It's best to take a picture of the wires for reference. Now disconnect the wire harness. In some models, you might have to unscrew the assembly to test the wire terminals directly. Set the multimeter to the ohms or resistance setting. Trace the wires to the connector. Now touch the probes to both terminals. There should be continuity with a resistance reading between 100 and 500 ohms. Repeat the test for each solenoid. If the resistance is significantly off, or if there is no reading and no continuity, then the valve is faulty and will need to be replaced. Disconnect any additional wires. Now unscrew the valve from the mount. This will give you more room for your hands. If needed, remove the plastic retainers. To remove each water line, you'll have to press down on the locking tab. Let any water drain into the container. Now remove the water valve. Take the new valve and push each water line into the appropriate connector. If needed, reinstall the plastic retainers. Align the valve onto the bracket and tighten the screws. Finally, reconnect the wires. If you've eliminated all other problems and the ice maker still isn't working properly, then it's best to install a new one. If needed, remove the ice bucket assembly. Now disconnect the wire harness. Loosen or remove the mounting screws. Now simply lift up to remove the ice maker. To install the ice maker, First, slide it onto the mount. Now, tighten the screws. Next, reconnect the wire harness. If needed, replace the ice bucket assembly. Align the back panel onto the mounting tabs. Now tighten the screws. Reconnect the water supply and tighten the connection. Open the shutoff valve. Plug in the cord to reconnect the power. Now slide it back into place. Make sure to leave a couple of inches of space between the refrigerator and the wall. This will allow for proper airflow. 
Now test the refrigerator to see if it's working properly. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an Amory location to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.